This past Saturday at Eisenhower Park was the TD Bank-sponsored Celebrate America concert and fireworks. The beautiful fireworks were courtesy of the Grucci family, or, as I prefer to call them, although I did not coin this, America's first family of fireworks. The Gruchis have been in the business since 1850. From the town of Bari in southern Italy to Elmont, Long Island, immigrant Angelo Lanzetta Sr. came through Ellis Island and ate, um, in the 1870s, and the business is still thriving six generations later. Their credentials are highly impressive. They became widely known when they took home the gold medal for the United States at the Monte Carlo International Fireworks Competition in 1979. Since then, the Gruchis have proved uh, have provided fireworks for presidential inaugurations since Ronald Reagan's in 1981. They also earned a Guinness Book of World Records title for the largest ever fireworks display just this year on New Year's Eve, and they did it in Dubai. And let me tell you, you can find it on YouTube, and it is stunning. Joining us this morning is President and CEO of Fireworks by Grucci and Pyrotechnic by Grucci. You guessed it, he's a Grucci. Phil Grucci, to be exact. Good morning, Phil. Good morning. How are you today? Very well, thanks. How are you? Very good. Phil, my first question is, are you tired of Katy Perry's <laughs> firework, or is that one that you guys have integrated into your show? Because I, I don't work in fireworks, and I'm tired of it. I'm, I was chuckling while you were playing that as the intro. Uh, I'm not tired of it, but we certainly have heard it many, many times, hundreds of times. That's very congenial of you to put it that way, but I can hear the undertones in your voice. You're on my team with the No More Katy Perry Fireworks. It's, it's funny when someone comes up to me and says, hey, I've got a great song for you to use for one of your fireworks shows. Hey, hey, hey Phil, I bet you never <laughs> thought of this before check it out it's it was number one for about three months but you probably haven't heard it it talks about fireworks so you know let's, uh. no we have a lot of fun with it though it's, it's, it's a great song because it's very upbeat and we could we could work with it as far as choreography is concerned all right very nice so so let's talk a little bit about what it means for uh, fireworks by Gucci to be a family business let's start there well, it's, that's everything for us. Um, you know, the glue, uh, the, the network that we have uh, with our, within our immediate Grucci family, as well as the staff that we have here. You know, so many of them are 15, 20, and 30-year employees of ours. But to, to look at the sixth generation, the fifth generation, which, is, uh, which I'm a member of, and watching my nephew, nieces, and my sons and daughter uh, come into the business is, is really a pleasure. And in times like now, when we are working very hard, we're working around the clock, it's good to see that everybody's engaged. Excellent. So let's do the historical perspective first. Do you know how Angelo Lanzetta became involved in the fireworks business back in Italy in the 1800s? What my grandfather tells me, tells us, mm -hmm. um, is he was primarily a, uh, he also uh, was in the produce business, uh, distributing produce okay. um, and making fireworks. And back then, Fireworks making was making a single shell uh, or single shells, and they would compete with those shells that they would make, some of them very elaborate, some of them having effects in them that would last tens and 15 seconds in the sky at a time. Um, so it wasn't really a display business at that time. It was more of a, a craft that he used to compete in. Once it came here to the United States uh, with my grandfather and his uncle, his uncle Anthony, which was the second and third generation of our family, then it became more of a, uh, a display-oriented entertainment business, if you will. Hmm. So one of the early innovations that set the Gruchis apart was the stringless shell. So for those of our listeners, I would imagine most who don't really know much about the composition of a firework, what is the shell and then what are the stars and what made the stringless shell so uh, you know, innov innovative? Right. All of the effects that you see that are launched into the sky are of the peonies and the chrysanthemums and the splitting comets and effects like that are all launched from a tube, a mortar tube, similar to a cannon. Uh, so they're, they're encased in a hard casing that's strong enough to be able to lift out of a mortar tube, but yet weak enough to explode when it explodes in the sky to allow all of its effects to, uh, to take fire and to display in the air. Um, that casing, uh, it tr traditionally, back in the old days, if you will, in the early 40s, 50s, when my grandfather was manufacturing product as well, uh, was strung. They had a, a lot of string that went around. It's similar to a, the core of a baseball, a strung, the string that goes around the outside of that core. So when a firework would function in the sky, sometimes that string would take ignition by, by virtue of the thing exploding, 
and that string would come smoldering down to the ground, mm. and it would cause problems in you know potentially getting in somebody's eye if the wind was blowing in the wrong direction, or landing on cars and, and creating uh, damage to paint jobs and things like that. So he developed a firework device that uh, that eliminated the string, more us- utilizing more on paper mache type techniques uh, to eliminate the string. So when the shell exploded in the sky, what came down was just light pieces of confetti. And back at that time, when we when he innovated that, that was a major um, step in the right direction from a safety perspective. So it allowed fireworks to continue from an aerial display perspective. And we still, to this to this to this day, practice the same technique in our manufacturing. Hmm. And looking at today, I mean, you guys have gone from the innovative stringless shell to computerized firing, which allows for incredible precision. Can you tell us about the new technology in fireworks as opposed to, uh, you know, the, the, the stuff that your family came up with years ago? Sure. What's going on in the world of fireworks today? <clears throat> We're doing everything now utilizing, certainly, as you mentioned, technology, utilizing the microchip, utilizing the computer to not only dis, uh, design firework displays, but also discharge and fire them into the sky. And now we've advanced it to the point where we're actually embedding very tiny computer chips, microprocessors uh, inside of some of our elaborate shells to be able to create um, abstract shapes in the sky. So if you could put a dot in the sky, the item that we've developed and trademarked is a pixel burst. So it's a shell that goes into the sky and creates just a dot. And you, if you can envision, uh, you can connect a bunch of dots you could make some pretty abstract shapes in the sky. I so saw smiley faces at yeah. Eisenhower Park. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> That's not quite the Pixelbrook technology. That's a different okay. technology okay, okay. that we, we also have been refining. Uh, but the Pixelburst technology is used uh, to create that type of a, a shape, like a smiley face, but much larger scale. So mm. when we have a, a very large, vast location to fire from, the sides of a river, uh, the ocean, you know, large open fields, we're able to create those types of uh, those types of images. Like if you go onto our website, you'll see rainbows and, and pyramids and, and other type of abstract shapes that we've created with the pixel burst. Now, looking at the future of fireworks, we're talking now about, you know, the past and what's currently going on. I remember specifically in a movie, a little movie, not many people saw it, The Lord of the Rings, The Fellowship of the Ring. The wizard Gandalf shot up a firework, which turned into a dragon and flew down towards the uh, crowd and all that stuff. I don't think we're quite at that level yet, although I don't work in the industry, so I'm not certain. Where do you, the Garuchis, see fireworks going in the future? How do you think it's going to stack up to what people have in their imagination now as where fireworks could go? That's an excellent, excellent question. It's, it's often thought of um, as far as our imaginations, what, what our imaginations could think up you know, 10 years from now. Hmm. Uh, I sit here now, and my, I'm sure my father 20 years ago never thought that we would be firing fireworks with a computer system and with putting chips in, inside of firework shells. So I think of that often. You're right. We're not at the point where we can create that, that elaborate dragon in the sky, but we're getting to the point where we can put certain shapes up in the sky and then tell a story more effectively than we have in the past by utilizing the technology. But I look at my, my 19-year-old son, Christopher, and, and my daughter, Lauren, and nephews and nieces and say, I don't know what they're going to come up with in the next 15 or 20 years. You know, the technology moves so quickly. I think... From a from a installation perspective, we're going to see a lot more wireless technology, you know, within our own uh, within our own industry. Uh, we're going to see certain um, developments which we're investing greatly in right now, in perfecting the casing and the materials that, that are used in fireworks from an environmental perspective. You know, you're always looking to make something uh, safer, certainly more green, and being sensitive to the environment. Although the product we have now is biodegradable, but trying to make it such that you have nothing coming back down to the ground. Um, so there's, there's, a lot of, uh, there's a lot of focus in that direction now. But I don't know what that's going to be. Ten years from now, it could be com- completely different, and I, I'm looking forward to seeing that. Right, and it may be the next generation of Garuchis that are really working on that, not you, as you move on into, uh, into the later years. Now, their question in music, the younger generation, may be questionable, as we've already gone over in this segment. But I definitely think that the sense of imagination and the, uh, the realization of what's possible is going to improve as time goes on. But looking at what you guys have done, Rebecca has a question about some of the things that uh, have already happened. Yes. So you mentioned about, you know, telling stories with these fireworks. Can you talk about some of the Gucci's crowning achievements? I know the list is extensive, so maybe choose some of your favorites. 
Uh, some of the favorites are, yeah. are the bicent- the uh, the hundredth anniversary of the Brooklyn Bridge back in 1983. That when that in our entire family was a major milestone. Uh, and then rolling fast forward very quickly, uh, seven presidential inaugurations to today, um, which just past New Year's Eve, we just broke a Guinness Book of World Records. Mm-hmm. We went to we were invited to come to the Middle East, to Dubai, uh, and on New Year's Eve present a fireworks program that shattered the previous record by about six times. Wow. Uh, we, we brought 200 pyrotechnicians from the, the tri-state area to the Middle East and, and set up a fireworks show that, within our wildest imaginations, we never thought we would have the opportunity to produce. And it was, it was phenomenal. Like I said in the intro, people can watch it on YouTube. It's beautiful. <laughs> It, it went it went beyond the seams of uh, of capacity. We we pulled out all the stops for that one, and uh, and believe it or not, we're in discussions right now for the pot- potential of an encore. So mm. hold on to your hats. Cause here <laughs> we go, as coined by a very good friend of ours, George Plimpton used to say. <laughs> right now, Phil, you went with the obvious choice of Dubai and you know the Guinness World Records. I grew up in Stamford, Connecticut, and I remember the yes. Gruchis doing the Fourth of July celebration sure. there. I'm disappointed that that was not listed <laughs> as one of the crowning achievements of the Gruchis. But no, I, I, if, I, if I had to go through the long list, I, if you have the time, I'll, I'll I'll take the time to give you the entire list. So <laughs> Stamford stands very high on our list as well. Uh-huh. There's many many cities around the country that we are so very proud that we've been invited to come into the community and perform. And, uh, you know, the list just goes on. So you bring a good point up. I mean, I'd like to sh- give a shout-out to everyone that's out there that has the confidence to bring us to their community to entertain before their families and friends. Right. And and in Stanford, I remember being a kid and my mom saying, hey, you know, the Gruchis are doing fireworks down at, uh, I think it was at Cove Beach or one of those that's in right. Stanford. And I didn't know what that meant, but it was obviously a big deal from the way she was saying it, because you guys have been very well known for a very long time. And as we mentioned, you are a family business. How many Gruchis and other, uh, I guess, offshoots of the Gruchi family are involved in the business? How many of you guys are there? This weekend, there'll be just the immediate... Um for, uh, cousins and nephews and sons and daughters, uncles and aunts, is about 12, 13 of them that are out. Then you get into the extended family, and it's probably in the 20s. And then we have, well, we'll have all total out um, this weekend about 350 pyrotechnicians. So it's quickly, you know, we're finding now that some of our pyrotechnicians are actually in their second generation. So their sons and their daughters are also going out. Uh, but there's no there's no family picnics going on on the Fourth of July. Our, our family mm. picnics happen in, in at the end of August sometime. <laughs> <laughs> Every, all work, hands are on deck. It's a work day for you guys. It may it be a federal holiday is. and everything, but not for the Gruchy family. You know, that's mostly, when you're making your money. That's mostly all of our holidays are work days. So we have a holiday on the off days. Do you guys just do one fireworks show on the Fourth of July, or are there actually a few going on? Do you guys ever do multiple ones on the same day oh, at different locations? Absolutely. Okay. We have 80, 80 performances out this oh weekend from Hawaii uh, to South Florida to up in Maine and certainly a, a slew of them here on Long Island. Who got the Hawaii job? Like, how do you guys decide in the family Everybody. who gets to go to Hawaii and who's going to Maine? Every- Everybody asks me that question. Everybody, I'll go to Hawaii if you really need somebody out there. I says, yeah, no, no fooling. <laughs> so were the other 350 pyrotechnicians. And as Rebecca but, uh, said, Maine is pretty, but it's also pretty cold. I think it's still snowing in Maine this week. And no. somebody's going up there to shoot off the fireworks, and somebody's going to Hawaii. Actually, yeah, that's, it's quite a, it's, that's, the, that's the place to be. But you know, every place right now on the 4th of July is, is, uh, is beautiful. We're all going to have some rain. I heard your, yeah. your weather forecast, so we're preparing yes. for that. As I was going to ask what what kinds of preparations do you have to do for for you know for expected rain and other weather conditions? The the logistics on on a rain out is really the the challenge for us. You know, with the eighty programs going out, and this year the Fourth of July being on a Friday, mm-hmm. most of the programs are happening either Friday or Saturday. If the Fourth of July is midweek, then they split the two weekends. They go for the weekend before and the weekend after. So what we have to do is have the crews are all have have to be prepared to stay an extra day. To, uh, to, to watch the fireworks and certainly and reload them and fire them the next day. If most of the shows that we have, the rain day is the following day. Okay. And this year, specifically, we could take advantage of it 
because Fourth of July being on a Friday, most of the rain days are on Saturday, the following day. Sure. Right. Maybe yeah. rain. Fireworks are protected. The what? fireworks are protected from the moisture and the rain. It's just no, really good. the audience. The audience is who we, you know, who we're uh, concerned with. Right. Exactly. Well, maybe rainproof fireworks displays for the audience and the workers are <laughs> something that the next generation can work on. They need to get. Well, we started. have rainproof fireworks. So we're prepared for the rain. Oh, okay. okay. Um, so it's just it's a matter of the audience being comfortable to watch it and in. being safe. Yeah. You know. It's, with rain, sometimes thunder, lightning, and all of those other wicked things. Exactly. You, you mentioned safety right there, and actually, Rebecca did a lot of research for this, and she noticed on your website that you guys offer training seminars for people interested in becoming certified Gruchi pyrotechnicians. Can you talk a bit about this program? I mean, it's something that you guys love and you're sharing with others, but also, I, I can recall distinctly, uh, you know, growing up in Connecticut, stories on the news of, you know, people trying to set off fireworks from, uh, you know, different places in the state, and people sure. losing their lives, losing limbs. I mean, it, it happens every 4th of July. Can you talk about the safety and the training that you guys offer for people who might be interested sure. in doing this? The training that we offer is for pyrotechnicians that, uh, that are employed by us that go out and produce firework displays. As, those, as I just mentioned, those 80 shows, they won't be going out to Hawaii on their first performance. <laughs> but, so the training that we offer is for the pyrotechnician uh, position of a pyrotechnician. Uh, but the accidents many of the times that you hear that are you know, unfortunately on the news at this time of the year are primarily caused by people misusing the product. You know, they're, 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 they're unfortunately, most of the time, they're inebriated or they're under the influence and they're not following the directions because there are fireworks that are consumable, capable, that people can go out and enjoy. Unfortunately, the state of New York has no, you know, there's, no, there's a law against all fireworks other than professional fireworks. Right. So really my caution to everyone is, if you are in a state that, that allows the use of consumer fireworks, just read the directions and follow the directions and do it responsibly. Right. Um, the professional firework displays, which is the training that we offer, is for those that go out and you have a, a live audience of tens of 15,000 people. That's, and it's a very cool thing for people who are interested in that as a possible career. Uh, is, is it a seasonal business or is it a year-long type of thing? Are you guys doing stuff all year long? We are, we are active all year long. It's a full-time business that we have, but we do have two peak seasons. One is the 4th of July, naturally, mm -hmm. and the other is New Year's Eve. Um, so on both of those, those holidays, all of our pyrotechnicians are deployed. Uh, during the, during the off-season, in between those two peaks, we produce about 10 to 15 shows a week. So we keep those pyrotechnicians active. Most of them are part-time. Most of them have other jobs as lawyers, mechanics, or whatever. You, you pick it. We have it in our, in our team. 10 to 15 shows a week. I, I do two radio shows a week, and that's like <laughs> a bit much for me. So I, I give you guys some kudos on the amount of work that you're, you're going yeah, for. It's a lot of logistics, you know, just to get the right people in the right location. And, and we are moving explosives with the fireworks, so yeah. it's moving moving energetic material from, you know, from our facility in Virginia to our facility here in Long Island to our facility upstate New York, and then two or three facilities around the country. Mm -hmm. uh, Las Vegas and Hawaii are two other big hubs that we have that we, uh, that we right. distribute out of. Right. Okay. So, well, for those living right here on Long Island in the local area, where is the next place that they can watch one of your fireworks displays if they missed the one in Eisenhower Park where they couldn't get enough? And how can they access your performance schedule? The performance schedule is on the web, www.gruchi.com. So you can go there, and there's a convenient schedule to see, especially in Long Island, uh, what displays that we're producing. Um, but just a quick list, we have about 15 programs that are uh, from as far out as Montauk uh, into Nassau County, into Glen Cove also. We're producing a show over at Point of Woods, uh, Go Forth on the Bay. Uh, over here, right here in uh, Bald Hill, well, Long Island Events is sponsoring a fireworks program right on Bald Hill, which is a great location to go to. Uh, Wheatley Hills Country Club, Devon Yacht Club, there's a whole host of fireworks programs, Southampton Fresh Air Club. So we're active yeah. here on Long Island. This is our home. You know, we, we enjoy performing here, and certainly many of the programs that we perform here on Long Island are those types of shows that are all American. You know, it's a small grassy knoll looking out over the bay for the Go Forth programs that we produce. Mm. And you hear people reminiscing about when they were young with their children, and it's really a, you know, it's really a pleasure and an honor for us to have this type of occupation at this time of the year. Perfect. Well, Phil, it was a pleasure and an honor for us to have you on Hofstra's Morning Wake Up Call this morning. We thank you so much for being with us. Well, thank you for the invitation. I appreciate that. Absolutely. Thank you very much, Phil. Have a great day, and best of luck on the Fourth of July. Yes, happy, happy Fourth. Happy Independence Day to everybody. Be indeed, safe. Indeed. <laughs>